I'm live, I'm live, hello, hello. Okay, close your eyes. We're gonna do the wiggle jiggle thing. Let's put it over here and down like that. Zoom in nicely. Zoom in nicely. Turn off the volume of my Chromebook. Here we go. And I was doing business stuff on it and I had to volume up. Hello everyone, hello. Oops, trip over everything. Okay. We're here, we're here, we made it. Let me clear off all the junk so I can see people chatting with me. Hi Jackie. All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone is having a good day. We all made it through Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, New Year's. And I always think of this point as like, this is the easy part of the year. Birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, school ends, school starts, summertime. It's really not as much to it as the end of the year. Jody's here, but she's grocery shopping. Jody, you didn't time it very well. You're still stuck at the store. I haven't been to the grocery store in a bit, and I don't plan on going for a while because I'm going to do the best I can. Well, I have to go because I have to get things like toilet paper, but I'm doing the best I can to not buy any food. I want to finish up a lot of the stuff that I have. I've gone through a lot of it already. But I have other things now that I also need to go through them. And I just want to see if I can empty out. The refrigerator and the freezer are pretty good. But I mean, why not empty out the pantry while I'm at it, right? Connie. Oh, excuse me, guys. I forgot to do one thing. I miss whiskers. You want to come up and say hi? No, go hide underneath the bed. The cats, I don't know what happened. My daughter came home, she left, and all five cats are just like crazy. They're all fighting with everyone. It's absolutely nuts. That's okay, Jackie. You are absolutely allowed to come in and out as you need. I hope you are doing well. Hi, Lazy Monarch. I'm sorry, I have absolutely no idea what your name is. Are you new here or did you change your name and I just don't know it? Hello, Deborah. I think I said hi to Connie, but hi to Sunny. Hi to Gammy Rowe. Hi to everybody. Hello, hello. I just need to fix the door stopper. Come with me, cord. For six months while I lived here, the door wouldn't stay open it would always just automatically close. And now it just keeps getting open and stays open and doesn't do anything. Ah, uh, that's a bit of a chore in itself. Hi, Becky, you're new. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us today. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I said I was gonna pull something out of the Barney bag, so I decided, you know what? Crumb blocks sound like fun. The more things I pulled out of the Barney bag, the more I noticed they were a lot of this stuff. So I thought, why not start on a new crumb curtain? Because everything else in the Barney bag was things I want to make, but it's more of a, it's not a live stream thing. It's like, hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, you're cold in Arizona. Oh, no. It's been cold here in Florida for the longest time, and we have another cold front coming through. It's like crazy. We were only having like five cold days throughout like the whole winter, and now it's been cold for weeks. And cold for us, and I'm saying cold, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze, I think. Ooh. If you can will yourself not to sneeze, <laughs> Yesterday was, seven, uh, today is going to be 79, yesterday was like 77, and then we're dropping back down to a high of 60. 
There were some days where we didn't even see 60 degrees. It was crazy. I've been looking because I compare, I compare where my friend is up in Iowa. I compare to Cape Coral, Florida, wherever my daughter is in Surprise, Arizona. And I'm like, it's crazy everywhere. People up north, it's warmer than it should be, and it's colder than it should be in other places, and it's just craziness everywhere. But I'm not going to complain because I've been wearing jeans for like three weeks straight, and normally if I wear jeans for three days or three half days, I'm lucky. I like to wear jeans. 27 in Illinois, burr. Can we talk here for a minute about irons? Look at the iron I'm using. My Panasonic cordless blew up on me yesterday. I was sitting here, I was pressing things, working on a Patreon video, and it just kind of like spewed water and chunky calcium deposits everywhere. It was pouring out the bottom of the iron. It was crazy. It was spitting and spurting. Got my mat wet, got the carpet wet. I'm like, oh no. I guess when I decide to blow up an iron, I go all out. So I do have this one as my backup. My oldest Justin bought this Sunbeam Steam Master Professional. Why oh, this is a great steam iron. It shoots steam out unbelievably. Hi Nan. Oh yeah, you guys, everyone's having sunny winter days. And some places haven't even had snow yet. It's crazy. But it's good, but then it's bad because you guys need the snow to have enough water in the springtime. This iron's great for steaming and everything, and it makes a nice flat block. But when I go to press the blocks, I can't really press, I can't get it to go like this to press the seam over. And so much steam comes out of this, it's crazy. I burn my fingers all the time. Yeah, I've, you know what, I've been, I've been looking at the Oliso and you know, it's with Christmas and everything, and all the time anyways, they're constantly showing giveaways on Instagram and everything. So I enter all the giveaways, and I haven't won one yet, and I didn't expect to because lots of people enter. But I'm like, you know what? They showed a new iron. They said they have a new one out that it has some type of a cartridge in it that allows you to use... Um, hard water and it stops it from getting that calcium build up and all of that stuff. Hi Grace. I like some of the old ones. I usually get one. The, the irons usually last me about two years. I usually get like a $25 one from Walmart or something, which used to be $10 at Walgreens, but now, you know, it's a little bit more. And they last me a couple years, up to five years, but I put water in it like you're not supposed to. And I use my well water and I do try to clean them. Oh, let me try turning off this light. I am like burning up all of a sudden. Let's see if that makes it super dark in here. Uh oh, I got the spinning wheel. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Kathy. I think, let's see if this changes it too much. I think we're okay. Shoo. Um, Oh, I didn't even do all my spiels. Thank you for never for reminding me. Down below in the description box, I put the link to the old uh, playlist for the crumb curtain and how to do the crumb block. So if anyone's new to it, or if you want to go see the old curtain, I also put the link. I cut that curtain up and I turned it into fabric postcards and popped them in my Etsy shop. But now I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to need a new one. Cynthia, where are you in Florida? Because down here in Cape Coral, south of Tampa and Fort Myers, we're sunny, but it's going to get cold tomorrow, they say. Old school Black & Deckers really are good. I was looking at the Mini because the Mini is in a reasonable price range. And, that, and everyone seems to be liking them. I think people are buying them just because when I looked at the site, they were $60. So that's a reasonably affordable one. I just... I know I like this. This is really kind of a thing that I do a lot. And I packed all my silicone mats. So if I had a silicone mat, I could do this so it wouldn't really matter. But I like the fact that it has that regulator, that cartridge in there, that keeps it from getting all that junk in it. 
Yeah, Jackie, exactly. It's like those cheaper ones. So I was thinking, I was talking to my patrons. They don't know it yet because the video comes out on Sunday. And I was going back and forth about the iron and stuff like that. And I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do. I need to get a new iron. I know that much. Thrift stores, yeah. Thrift stores, sometimes you get a brand new one at the thrift stores too. This little iron is a pure steam. And you used to be able to get them on Amazon. I think I saw it on Amazon. But even if you can't, they have tons of different brands like this. I see them all over on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. People use them all the time. This, you can put water in, but I never do. It's very hot and it doesn't turn off. So you have to be careful. It does not turn off. Hi, Susan. Thrift stores here are just horrible. It's really just kind of like Goodwill. And they all have like brand new stuff and things are really, their used clothing is so overpriced. So I'm waiting to go to Arizona. Everyone tells me they have nice thrift stores there. So I pulled out of my Barney bag all of these little bits. I thought I would just start by sewing them together. Oh, this is what gets me in trouble. I also have these that are pieces that I found that were like cutoffs from something. So I'm obviously sewing something with red or someone else was because... No, I recognize all this fabric. Random brown bits and things like that. But I thought, you know what? Even if this doesn't become a crumb curtain, I also want to have a wall hanging. I want to have a crumb curtain. I can put it in the bathroom or a shower curtain. I have so many ideas. So even if I decide that I don't want my curtains to be like completely scrappy, I can still find a use for this. I really liked the cordless option on that Panasonic though, but it was pointed on both ends. So it had this point here on both ends so you couldn't set it down. You always had to go back to the base. Now it was nice at ironing in both directions and stuff, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. What gets me in trouble with crumbs is I make these and I keep making tons of them and next thing I know, I have 100 blocks. So this time I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm going to go ahead and, I don't square the blocks up, but I do like to have straight edges on all the sides. I don't create, we all create our own things, right? So I don't like this ruler today. Now you know what it is. I don't like the medical tape on it. It doesn't sit flat. Um, everyone does their own thing with the crumbs, right? You can do scrappy, you can call it crumbs. Crumbs is just, let's face it, it's a YouTube channel. I have to put things in the title. YouTube has this AI thing, well, through this program that I'm part of, that I pay for, that it will suggest a title for you. And it, it suggests something like the super magnificent, magnificent, fun and fabulous scrappy crumb curtain. And I thought, you know what, that's a little bit pushing at the AI there, right? And then I got myself lost. But anyway, I'm just going to take these. And when I square them up, I say I, I just even them up and I just slide my ruler down. Because that way I have straight bits either way. Scrappy and crumbs. So some people call it, you know, they get really upset if you don't use little tiny bits for your crumbs. And you're using more like scraps. But I say, if you're making it for yourself and you're having fun, does it really matter much what you call it? So I just take it through this process. Then I'll see if I can incorporate some of the bigger pieces. I also have, you know, a bin of stuff here. I just wanted to start with the little stuff first. But just by doing that crumb series before, I created enough blocks that one, I ran out of scraps. I had to actually cut fabric to finish my crumb curtain. And uh, yeah, I used up all the blocks that I shown it and everything, it was like really crazy. So it'd be fun to have another one. Overcast, doesn't feel cold, no fog, no coat. Is that the rule? Cause the fog kind of makes everything a little wet. I have to get a drink. I have been having this weirdest sleeping schedule lately. 
I normally go to bed 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I've been up to like one, two in the morning and then getting up at five or six and then, you know, trying to function all day long. It's been kind of hard, but I'm hoping my sleep cycle changes up pretty soon. Okay, so I have these and I don't care. I have Christmas and winter fabric and Halloween fabric. I have Barbie heads here. I'll add anything into a crumb curtain because it's really more about the color. Unless I'm doing something specific, I might want to have, you know, rainbow colors. I have somewhere in my collection, I made a bunch of four and a half inch blocks of only one color. So they're like all blue or all red and stuff like that. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But I keep finding that I didn't bring the right stuff to this house. I have everything from storage here. Everything's in the garage or the dining room now. So we're just at the point that we're waiting for a house to find the right rental house so that we can leave at the end of the month. It's kind of like exciting, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like we'll ever leave. Okay, excuse me, I, my asthma is bothering me today with the way the weather keeps changing. So I used my inhaler, so it should be good, but just yell at me, I'll move my mic away if I'm too breathy. Oh, your granddaughter is in Surprise, Arizona. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I, I haven't bought anything. I told my son today, I was going to take some of my winter clothes out of the box when my daughter and I moved things out of storage, but we work so hard and so quickly that I forgot. And all of my clothes are in the back of the garage underneath a lot of boxes. So I said, forget it. And I'm not going to buy new clothes and there's no thrift stores here. So I just pile things on. I don't have what I want. That's okay. I'll just make do. It's not like I'm leaving the house and it's not like it's minus 20 or anything like that. Kathy, you're clean in your sewing room? I am good company, I hear. We just sit here and ramble on. Look up every now and then, see what's going on. So I'm hoping to get new clothes for me from the thrift stores and stuff. Not necessarily new, but just different clothes and stuff like that. And to, to get used furniture. I'm in the surprise groups. On, okay, let me get going on this instead of just chit-chatting. So I have these that the seams going down the center. So I will try to find things where I can go ahead this way. I like to keep whatever size block, either a piece of paper, cardboard from a cereal box or my ruler so that I can see if I'm going to hit that six and a half inches. Cause sometimes I might keep some, let me just pull something out of the trash. There was this white fabric in there. It's too thin, but sometimes I'll keep, just thinner pieces, narrower pieces, so that I can add it in between to bring it up to the six and a half inches and see how that works. But yeah, so I saw in the surprise groups a lot that a lot of people just put things to the side of the road and give it away, or they have the free group that they give it to in the Facebook group. So I thought, you know, I'll see if I can get furniture and stuff that way. I hope this machine isn't too loud. I'm on my little brother today. So I thought I'd do that. And before I started, you know, buying stuff to just see what I can get first before I spend the money on it, you know, I'd rather get something with a new life like that than to bring something brand new into the house. All right, so let me trim this mess off here. Then I'll just even this one up. I don't even have to bring out my rotary cutter, although I'm terrible at cutting straight lines with scissors. Mine always curve. They always get this curve to them. But scraps I don't have sewn into 10 inch blocks by the time I decide what I'm going to do with them will be donated. That is an excellent plan. There's a lot of people that hang out in this channel that are over in the Arizona or West Coast area. So we're going to have the live stream today, which is the 5th. We'll have the live stream again on the 19th of January. And that pretty much should be 
possibly the last live stream from here. We might do it on the 2nd of February, depending on when we leave. But if we do, I don't know if we're going to actually have much like this to do. It might just be a hangout and chat because I have the embroidery kits and stuff like that that I saved and brought here for random things like that. You ever have a plan and then when you sit down, you're just like, hmm, what was I going to do? Maybe I'll add them all to a black strip. Bring some crazy color into it. Not all of them, just some of them. Yeah, so the last time I ran out of scraps, this time I'm like, hmm, I don't really have a lot of scraps because I sold them all to you guys. I have my colored scraps, but I didn't want to pull them out off of the shelves here because most of them are, well, they're, they're set aside and geared to a specific project that hopefully I'll get to soon after moving. I decided I want to sew some fabric bins, like a blue scrap bin using blue scraps and stuff like that. I've been losing my train of thought so much lately and I don't feel like I have a lot going on in my head but maybe I've got more going on than I realize all right that's good for that so I'll just cut this let me finish it I put another placemat type thing underneath this to see if it would absorb some of that sound I don't know. I don't notice things when it's just me, but then it's like, I worry that with the microphone right on my shirt, that's gonna be loud. Purging and cleaning my sewing room. Reusable grocery bags, nice. I purged when I packed, so really I'm in good shape when we get to Arizona. It's just kind of, um, you know, figuring it all out. I've been mentally Every time I see a house, I kind of see the idea that there's a lot of houses that are the same in Arizona, just like anywhere else. So I kind of see what they look like. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use the closet for my storage, put shelves in or something and use it for storage of the fabric and uh, different things, you know, the stuff I make and stuff like that. So I'm like picturing how I'm going to set that up and all of it. So I have a good idea of what I'm going to do. I'm only going to have a full size or a double size bed. So that's not going to take up a lot of room in the bedroom. Florida, Florida houses in this area, at least they don't have a lot of closets. And I saw that in Arizona, there's like a closet in the entryway, which would be great for shoes. And then a closet in this bedroom and off in that hallway and in various places. So that'll be nice to have different closets. You like, so a lot of people say they like the sound of the sewing machine. So I'm like, I'll just go ahead and do it. Oh, I forgot my spiel again. If you've made it this far and you haven't leaned, left me a comment yet stating that I talk too much, this is a live stream where we hang out and I talk and apparently I forget what I'm talking about and I stop and I talk to other people and we just have a good time. So live streams are really chatty and they're long. I mean, not long for me because they're only an hour and a half, two hours, but some people can go on for nine, 10, 12 hours, which is really kind of fun when you're not the person doing all the talking. So that's what this is. I said the links were down below in the comments. Oh, I turned off again the the ads, you shouldn't see any ads while we're live. I'll turn them back on afterwards, but if you're watching the replay and you hear or see a lot of ads, leave me a comment or send me an email and I will go in through the backside and edit them out. YouTube automatically does it. I was thinking they allow us to adjust for the ads and schedule them. So maybe when we're in Arizona, if the live streams start getting long, We'll do like a commercial break, maybe 45 minutes, an hour in. Everyone can stop, go to the bathroom, get a drink, clean up the sewing table here or something like that. But we'll all get the ad at the same exact time. It won't be random where you, whoop, 
Did, was that an ad? <laughs> I, I don't really care for that. And I know you guys don't either because you miss whatever rambling conversation I might be having with myself. I've been really good here with the kids. I haven't. Now for this one, you guys see all that brown? So I'll just say, oh, let's go ahead and go like that. That's the fun part about sewing with scraps is you don't have to be precise for this type of project. You can just go ahead and cut back on that extra, change things up. Like if for some reason this centerpiece was too much, you can cut it in half and have two separate pieces. Like this one here, maybe this one's too much. I can go ahead and chop that one in half, but my crumbs are very rectangular. I don't like dealing with all the triangles. I took all the triangle bits and I cut them off and I saved them to make hourglass blocks. Hey, you wanna see the fun hourglass blocks I made today when I was waiting for the video to start? Talk about autopilot. That's not an hourglass block, that's a half square triangle. It's pretty fabric and stuff, but I guess I'll turn these into flying geese then because I did not make hourglass blocks. I had to actually watch my own video earlier to figure out how to do them, but that was my own fault because I wasn't paying attention. Cassandra, I am making a bunch of blocks and then when they hit my desired size, whether it's four and a half or six and a half, for me, the smaller the pieces, the smaller the block, the bigger the pieces, six and a half inches is great. So then I can take all of these and I can just sew them together and I can keep sewing them together or like I did, I added them on. There's a link down below to my playlist for the crumb blocks. So I can just go through and find other ones that work together. Like this one is more than six and a half. So let's see what this looks like. So I can just take it here and there we go. So we have one piece, it's more than six and a half and this one's less, but it's okay. Cause of the way the seams, I don't need all those extra seams. I do kind of a, a weird log cabin type thing when I'm sewing them together. Hi Kathleen, happy new year. Thank you guys so much and go ahead and catch the replay. It'll be there. Remember the comments, the live stream comments don't show up for about 24 hours. And then if you can't find them afterwards, I made a little video on how to find the comments, hopefully. Oh no, Deborah. Sandra, when you're sewing with scraps, in my opinion, when you're sewing for crumbs and scraps, you can really just do whatever you want. As long as the finished project doesn't fall apart, I say do anything you want. I just tend to sew a whole bunch of twos together and then I take the twos and I sew them together and create fours. So even if you had these, you can just flip them and sew them together like that or find a piece that's about this size. I'm not to that point yet. So maybe I will take some more of these pieces I usually just have a big mess here to pick through. Make sure you keep your rotary cutter closed. And then as I'm going through in the um, tutorial series, I had you guys go like this. You take them and as you're trimming them, you put them in piles based on their size. So if these are about the same size this way, you put them together. So this one's a little longer. This one's a bit bigger, so I'll put that there. That one works about there, another big one, so that I can take the small ones and add to them and leave the big ones off to the side and let them do their thing. And I'm not doing exact, I'm just kind of, some, there might be two that go into two different piles even though they look about the same. And I just kind of make it up as I go along. And that, I find that easier and I usually do it while I'm pressing and cutting and stuff like that so that they're all set and I can just reach into a pile and I'll have these now. So I'll say, okay, well, these are the smallest. Maybe I wanna see if I can sew these together cause they're about the same. 
or maybe I'll put it onto this. It's got to be one about the same size. Nope. 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 That's close. I have a lot on each end, so maybe I'll just sew these together. Now, these are the end of my scraps. They have no home. They are not going anywhere else. So if I'm not going to worry about saving little bits, I'm going to go ahead and just cut them off. It's not my most precious fabric. I'm not too worried about it. So maybe I will see in this pile, maybe I say, okay, I'm going to sew this pile together now. Oh, these two will go together nicely, so I'll sew these together until I get big enough to be close to my block size of six and a half inches. I have ramble brain, so if you really want any type of detailed instructions, you're best to watch the tutorials. Deborah likes all the older stuff. I, I don't blame you. It tends to work really well. I have my grandmother's old sewing machine in the little wooden cabinet where it flips down. I'm pretty sure, yeah, no, it's got to be electric. There's no foot pedal. But that was the machine I actually learned to sew on. It's in bad shape, but I didn't want to get rid of it, you know? I'm, from memory, it's an old black singer, I believe. I just have to look at it and see what it actually is. Maybe I don't want all that blue together, so maybe I'll move on to this section here. Yeah, I'll put these together for a little bit. A lot of these were already put together, so they're quite matchy-matchy. And when you're putting it into a giant quilt, a little matchy-matchy, I figure it doesn't matter. This time I'm lining up the seams, but you don't really have to. They just happen to be there. And they want to nest, so why not nest them? There's even some salvage on this fabric, and it's all going into the seam allowance, so I don't care. So then maybe I want to pull into something new. Maybe I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm tired of working with that. Let's talk Arizona stuff. i got cactuses here, so let me just play with the cactus. So I'll put this as a long, long strip. So what I'll do with this is I'll start it in my machine, and I'll start adding some of these. I can add them on sideways. I can add them on, you know, this long ways. <laughs> Jody says, hey, is anyone going to the Phoenix Sew Expo at the end of the month? She'd love to meet up with you. Sorry, Jody, if you asked it before I wasn't looking. At Sunny, I find for me when I was doing the Crumb Block series that after six and a half, I had no more small pieces and I was having to cut long strips or sew a whole bunch of small pieces together. And since I was running out of scraps, six and a half was great. I got it done. I could finish a block if I wanted to in a certain amount of time. I don't know, an hour or less, right? Half hour of sewing, whatever. And then I could set it aside. A 12 and a half inch block, when I was doing scrappy log cabins with a swap, Doing the 12 and a half inch block, it felt like forever. I was constantly having to add more fabric. The fabric was getting longer. So for the crumbs, I found the six and a half works great. And then you can always make 12, 12 inch ones by putting four together or 12 and a half by putting four together or just put two together. And you know, when you're putting it all together, you can just mix it all up any way you want. Jody, you're emailing me? Oh, I always miss stuff in the chat. I'm sorry. I can't talk, sew, and read at the same time, apparently. So is Zoom the only way, like, we can all chat together and it's not just me talking? I feel like we need to do something where other people get to talk and show what they're working on. Is Zoom still a thing? Is that just a pandemic thing or people still do it? I'd like to do something where we can hang out and chat. 1952 machine, ah. Yeah, there's really, I mean, I have reasons why I do things. I don't know if it makes sense to anyone else, 
but in my world it makes sense. I really do. I try to do what other people do and to, you know, like be normal, quote unquote normal, but it just doesn't always work for me because well, we're all different. We all do things differently. And it took me a little bit to realize that, you know what? It's okay to be different. When we're all making nine patches, no matter how you get to the end, all of our nine patches, 12 and a half inch block, look the same. Sew it together, cut it, do it whatever you want. There's like six different ways or more that you can sew them together. So, I mean, why, why does it have to be just one way? Just because a designer puts it in a pattern doesn't mean we have to do it that way. Zoom is still very popular. Thank you. I'd like to find something, like I said, so we can chat sort of face to face. So other people can show what, like, we can just really do what I want. And we're all sitting around this table chatting and sewing. And then you guys can say, well, this is what's going on in my life. I went to the craft fair. I found this. Here, look. Because now you're like, hey, I have a 1952 this, that, sewing machine, iron. Well, otherwise, you could say, you know, here you go. Look at it. Or if you just want to talk and not be seen, I believe you can do that, too, simply by just covering up your camera, right? I have my camera covered on my little laptop. But I don't have the mental capacity right now to actually look into things. I've got, I've got enough on my hands, but as I start looking into stuff, I'd like to have a list, you know, this is what we want to figure out. We want to do this. I might actually have a tutorial video for you guys coming up next Friday instead of a hang out with me while I'm sewing and stuff. It's just been popping into my head and I've been, a lot of times I do the video and I talk to myself in my head instead of writing it all out. I kind of talk to you guys and, you know, tell myself I got to remember this and do that. Oh, and mute yourself too, yeah. I don't know. I've never like named a sewing machine or anything like that. Never named a boat either, as a matter of fact. Now my car, well, no, my car is non-gender too. Sometimes it's a girl, sometimes it's a guy. I talk to my car. I, I pat the dashboard and I say, thank you for getting me home safely. I appreciate that you didn't die. The, the tires didn't blow up. You know, we made it through traffic or whatever. I always tell my car, thank you. I'm definitely one of those ones that put the living thing into, you know, not animate objects. All right, so here's a, a partial block. I'm going to set that there. This one doesn't need to be trimmed. So this one, yeah, it can go there. Trim this guy a little bit. They always say what boats are girls, too, so in case your dog starts barking. Yeah. Or my kids, since their bathroom is is right there to say there's this chair is the same wall I mean I'm not complaining because we all do it but they they take their phones into the bathroom and they play music or podcasts or something and it's it can be really loud you guys might not want to hear that although what they listen to is not a big deal they're both fans both the boys are fans of the like the murder podcast and stuff like that ah see I'm not the only one I'm not crazy it's talk to the car. I mean, it did a good thing. Now you tell me if you're like on fumes trying to get to the gas station and you make it just in time, you're not going to thank your car for not running out of gas. I mean, I do. I mean, I don't do that, but I thank it for other reasons. Crumb blocks are definitely... I think it's one of those uh, 15 minutes. Was it Victoria Finley Wolf that did that so many years ago? 15 minutes of sewing every day. This is one of those things you can just have that little basket with all of your stuff in it. And you can sew for a little bit. Because it's a long-term thing in my opinion. It takes a while 
to get a block. Now some people, they don't bother to trim it or anything like this. They just do whatever and it's probably quicker, but I don't know. I like a straight edge. Like I said, I like that straight edge. I talk to everything. Yeah, see, I great. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, the boys love the murder podcast. I've listened to them a few times, but to be honest, I don't really do podcasts that much because I forget that they're there. I do audiobooks and YouTube, and then I kind of watch the same TV shows all over and over and over again. Like, I've watched Bones, probably just by living in this house here, I've probably watched the series four times over. So I can look at these, and maybe I want to just go ahead and say, hey, these are close. I can put them together like this, move it so the blues aren't touching. If you're particular, you might have to find your own way because I find like crumb blocks, I can't be too particular. It's more of a stick your hand in the paper bag and grab it and what you get is what you get. I'm gonna have to find something because I spend more time on my little tablet, I have, you know, just a little tablet. I spend more time, it's covered in fiber fuzz. I spend more time looking for something to listen to or watch on my tablet than I actually do what I should be doing. So I think I need to just set up, maybe put it in my little planner, things that I'm going to listen to or watch so I can just go straight to it. Especially January is a very slow month for YouTube, so a lot of people don't even put much onto YouTube. So you, you don't have a lot to watch, and I don't really want to watch a bunch of movies. Why am I having such a hard time with this this time? I can usually just grab and sew, but you know, sometimes you just you feel off, and it's just not the thing you should do. I find from sewing is really great, though, when your brain's not working, because let's say you're particular. So you're only sewing with red fabrics. So you have all your red fabrics right here. You can just go ahead and sew and not really think about it and then trim as you go or leave them and trim them later or something. So you don't have to think a lot. It's just a sew. And there's nothing, I do have a quarter inch seam set up, but if I get a little more, I get a little less, I don't care. Wow, Bones must be one of the popular ones there. It's on a few different things. I don't watch TV TV. I mean, I have my TV, but then I put, there's apps on it. It's a Roku TV. I pay for Hulu because there's a lot of shows on Hulu that aren't on anywhere else, and I watch them there. Plus, I can watch it without any commercials. But I do watch a lot of the free apps, too. Even Amazon Prime puts their TV shows and movies on freebie, and there's commercials there. But at least commercials give me time to step away and do something. But I find Bones really relaxing, even though it's a basically a gross scientific murder type thing. It doesn't always bother me. Sometimes I'm like, I just can't watch another CSI. I can't watch another murder crime spree. But Bones I find very relaxing. It's not stressful. I actually put it on at night when I go to sleep. Then I just have my piece of scrap fabric to hold my place. I need to clean my Juki, change the needle. I cleaned it a little bit, but it needs to be uh, deep cleaned. I need to change the needle again. I need to oil it. It was, um, it's not that it's misbehaving, but it wasn't the, the bobbin thread wasn't cutting with automatic threader. So I just need to go through and make sure it's all happy and everything is looking good on it, which is why I brought the brother out. But also I figured, you know, I need to work on some fabric postcards too. So I'll have that out for a little bit. Okay, so now I'm at the pressing point. So you can just say you're only going to work on two blocks at a time or five blocks. I think in the video I was doing ten blocks in the tutorial videos. I found that so for me five blocks and ten blocks is a lot of what I usually do. And even if you don't iron your seams properly and you get a little tucker or a pucker, 
for what we're making, for me, it doesn't bother me. So I'm not super worried, which is why I figured a little palm iron is good. Plus, I have that trigger finger with the little tendons and stuff right here. And the big iron hits right on there, so I have to be careful. But this iron, because of the way I hold it, it doesn't hit that spot. So while that's healing and doing its thing, I can just not be in pain from it. Another good reason to do crumbs. Now I have two seams here and three seams there, so I'm going to press to the less seam size. Hi, Charmaine. I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you can make it today because you guys, you're only one person, right? Ay, yeah, yeah. Mouth, that mouth brain connection. Now this one looks like we're getting pretty close. Look at that. So I am at six and a half inches. This is not done but I'll put it in the six and a half inch pile. So that, move my little thingy, so I'll put that there. And then I know I just need to make that wider. So if I get a second one that was six and a half inches, maybe I wanna sew it to that. But this one still has some things and doesn't even look like it needs to be trimmed. There's extra here on each side, so I wanna trim those. Just to re you got enough seams in there already, so I want to reduce some of that bulk. And this is a great project if you want to practice like free motion quilting, because it's going to hide everything in there. And if you have scraps on the back too, then you're not going to see anything. So this one, I'll just trim this weird bit off. I don't ever want to just sit and stare at the TV. If I, well, I mean, I do, but if I lose my creative mojo and I can't do anything, sometimes I will try to organize whatever I need to in my room, clean my sewing table, give it a good dusting, you know, vacuum underneath everywhere and stuff, and just do a bunch of things like that. Or I'll just pull out scraps and sew them like this. Even if I, give it to a friend or donate it. I don't use it or something like that. I think it's still kind of nice to have something so that um, if I don't do creative things, my creativity goes away. It takes longer to come back, that little sewing mojo and stuff. So something like this, I don't consider sewing. My brain doesn't look at it because it's not a thought process. I don't have to worry about things. I'm just sewing. And really, I'm using a random spool of thread right now, but I usually sew with that last bit in a bobbin. Put the bobbins at the top so you can just sew for a little bit and you'll see when the thread runs out. Put a full bobbin of your normal thread and then just put the little bits on top. And you just, oh, you run out of bobbin, pop a new one up. It's not really hard to thread the top of the machine. It can be annoying when you run out of bobbin and you don't notice it for like 10 minutes or something like that. But So I just put that through and use up all that, use up these scraps. And if I decide I don't like what I made, then I'll give it away or throw it away. So I'm going to do leaders and enders this year. That is part of my thing. I always said I don't mind doing them. I could just never find a reason to. If I had a project and I didn't have to purposefully cut the fabric to create a leader ender project that I would go ahead and do it. So this year I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it with my, my um, low volume flying geese that are made with strips of fabric and squares or whatever I think it is. We did a video once with it and for my, I'll get it. Sometimes it's nice I can pantomime things and my kids catch on, but you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. For my hourglass blocks and stuff like that. So when I'm sewing the scraps like that, I can just go ahead and do that. But if I have to think about it and plan a project, it's not going to happen. So I have two mustaches. I'll just flip them around and so the blacks aren't touching. I do plan, you know, rearrange a little bit, but for this... It's one and done. For other projects, I can change it three times and I'm done. I have to give myself rules and regulations. Otherwise, I'll sit here and change things around forever. So now let's see. Let's, let's find out what's in this pile. I've got that mystery pile. 
Let's put Barbie into something. Oh, now look. Okay, I'm not being picky, but that, that makes me sad. So I, I don't want to be sad. I'll put this on there. Maybe I'll put it next to Barbie's face. She can have stripes. If putting something together is going to make me sad, then I don't think it's it's a good idea. I'll use the brown. I just don't think it... I think it needs to go against a certain fabric to make it look nice. Even though with a chrome curtain, you're really not going to see it. Giovanna, you made it. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you made it. I'll put this one on here. And I can look at it and I can say, okay, well, this is not long enough. So I'm going to lose either a little bit off each end or maybe I'm like, oh, I don't want orange in my project. I'll move it down. Or maybe I'll be like, I really want a lot of the, I want all the orange and a little bit of the green since this piece is so big. So then I'll slide it that way. And I don't see rip on crumb blocks. I cut things off, I tear them. With my crumb curtain, there's actually fabrics and pieces that were sewn together backwards, you know, wrong sides up by mistake. I left them in there, they're in the curtain. I didn't change it. They're so small, who's gonna really know, right? If you guys haven't seen this, this is from the Gypsy Quilter. It's the little flower thread cutter thing. It's got a 60 millimeter, but there's also one for 45. There's an old rotary cutter blade in it. And it's one of the little thread cutters that you can just go like that. I love it. I use it all the time. That steam iron, it steams so well that the moisture actually comes all the way through this mat, which the Panasonic didn't, and it made the mat smell wooly. I'm like, whoa, now I know what people are talking about when they say it's wooly. Yeah, just change things up. Do what you want. Sometimes you just have to give yourself permission. And I know it can be hard for some people to give up total control. But if there's something that you can let go to make something a little easier for yourself, then see if you can. This should be... Yeah, there's six and a half, so I just need a, I need a, a piece. So I can add that piece on. Or do I have, what's my cactus look like? Cactus isn't wide enough. If I'm going to add something on in one long strip, I want it to be wide enough. I don't, I don't know why I don't want to put that red one there. Let me come to my bin of madness. I have this Christmas fabric from the trees. I like this fabric. So I will put that on there and then just trim off the extra. And that'll add a little brightness against some of these dark colors. Jody can't, Jody can't let go. Jody can't let go. No, Jody can't let go. But you know that about you, so you know how to work within your own parameters. I've had people message me years past, you know, how how can they do scrap sewing like this? They can't they can't throw the fabric in a paper bag. They're constantly picking it out and going, like I was just doing, nope, 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 nope. So that's why I said if you can't do this crazy, if you can't let go and do this, maybe you can do it with just one color. Or maybe you want to make a black and white quilt or a red and white or Valentine's Day is coming up, so maybe you want to do a pinks and reds and maybe throw in a purple if you can handle that. It's just figuring out the way that our brain works and what we can get away with. <laughs> How we can trick our brain to allow us to do different things. And if your seam is a little too big, I was just looking at this one, it's got a little bit extra seam. You can always cut it off. And if your seam, well, let me tell you right now, if your seam gets twisted, I don't come to me because I'll say, oh, okay, yeah, and mine are twisted all the time, even in a quilt. Just don't tell anyone. Unless they take the quilting out, take the backing off, and they look at your seams, 
Nobody's gonna know. Oh, hi, Nancy. I'm so glad you made it to join us. Nancy's been using the videos on how to knit a diagonal dishcloth. It's been actually a little popular this month. A lot of people have been watching that video and commenting on it. I think that's great. I love knitting dishcloths. I miss knitting dishcloths because I'm still knitting on that shawl as a Christmas gift. And it's probably going to be, I don't know, a 4th of July gift at this point, I tell you. I just can't seem to stay awake at night. And it's not... It's not super complicated, but it's not just knit, 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 you know? So I have to have a little bit of a brain power. I tell you, I put it on my lap and it warms me up. So it's because it's so large now and it's 100% wool. So it warms my lap up and I fall asleep immediately. Yeah, Giovanna, we're all different, right? And your daughter grew up with you and she has a whole different idea to it. Look, sometimes I trim with scissors, sometimes I trim it with the rotary cutter, I leave the rotary cutter open. I don't run with scissors though, I'm really good about that. And I always keep them pointing down. I don't know why, maybe I saw someone get injured or I got yelled at really loudly one point in my life, I'm not sure. All right, I've got thread all over me, so I'm an official quilter now, right? So where are we at? We need to finish this block ruler. So if we put this block together, we're going to have extra. So I think I need to make two blocks out of it. That's too much. I need something like a couple of skinny bits. Oh, that brown just wants to get used, right? So I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll add this to the bottom of it. As I say, it's like log cabin. You just start in the center. You keep adding it around. And however you get there, the people who do the other crumbs, they have like triangles. And then they have like this piece that comes out this way and one that comes out that way. I can't do that. So this is my adjustment. And I'm trying not to have too many blocks going at once. But you know what? I don't care. I'm going to do what I want. Just like I tell you guys to do. Do what you want. I want to sew these pieces together. This is going to make me happy. I do want to make sure we have one block that we can see that six and a half inches though. So we can have that idea. Hi, Anne. Welcome, welcome. Black and blue. Nice. My daughter is still in the red, black, and white. Nothing girly, nothing with flowers. Geometric is good, but that's, that's about her thing. <laughs> Jody, your daughter is very particular. She knows exactly what she likes, and she's not going to let anyone, including you, change her mind. And I think that's great. So here I am. I have my six and a half inch block. It is larger than my ruler. It's close, though. Excuse my gray hair while I lean over. I think what I'm going to do, this is really close, is I'm going to add a cactus down to, whoa, get over here. I'm going to add a cactus strip down to the bottom also, even though there's a cactus there. I kind of like it when it does a T like that. And that'll give me a little wiggle room so I can bring in this cactus piece and leave some of this big and trim that off of there because it's the extra wide bits. Ooh, straighter edge. <laughs> that one had a lot of curves in it. I don't want to be, oh, that's so close, or it might like change and get out of shape as it's sitting in the pile or someone looks at it cross and it becomes too short. You know how fabric is, it does weird things. Having a small pair of scissors at the table is good. Oh, here are mine, mine are big. Small pairs are good too. If you're doing a leader ender like Sue likes to do, you could really go crazy on a project like this. You would have a lot of leader ender stuff. Hi, Ann, you're too CP to sew? You can just hang out with me, but you got to be careful because I heard that uh, my voice is pretty, uh, pretty good at putting people to sleep, so be careful. You might take a nap. 
So I have the extra here. So let me see. Yeah, you guys can see there. So I have the cactus and I will go ahead and take as much of that as I can. And then I have a wide strip of trees down there. So now I don't have to worry. If I want, maybe I want to line up a straight line on there if that's important to me. But the rest of the block is crooked, so it doesn't really matter. Maybe you only want to do this with jelly roll strips. This is a great way to use up leftover bits of jelly roll strips. Ooh, that cactus is really skinny. I'm gonna lose that in the seam allowance, but that's okay. It happens sometimes. After I get this trimmed, I'll give you a little bit of a close up. Whoop, sorry, kicked it. So that's probably gonna lose most of it in the seam allowance, but it'll be all right. It happens, it just happens that way sometimes. So there's a block, that block is done. We can put that right there so we can all look at its gloriness. It's scrappy, it's a lot of fabrics. Do I like it today? I, I don't know, I don't have this great emotional excitement of having it done, but maybe tomorrow I might be in a better mood, you know? Maybe I'm just in an off mood, maybe I have a headache or I'm tired or I'm just grumpy and it, I'm just gonna leave it because I know I love every fabric that's in there, so I should love the finished block. And if I don't, I can do things with it. I can take a solid piece of fabric that I do like and make house for triangles out of this and then put that together. I have a, a video series with string blocks and I think maybe there might be some what to do with your crumb blocks or something like that. And you can just go ahead and put, you wanna do it? I can do it, watch me do it. I'm in a room, well, I'm no longer in a room full of fabric, but I have fabric. So let's say we just take some white fabric at six and a half inches. For those of you that are maybe kind of, mm, I don't know, that's not the right size. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut off yardage, look at that. With all the white scrubs, you'd think I would have had something that's six and a half inches. Yeah, I, some people like straighten up their fabric and cut bits off of it so it's all level. I've never been that person. All of my fabric looks like it got eaten by a shark. So, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my six and a half inch square, make sure nothing, when you're working on a table like this, make sure you don't have anything underneath it. You know, like the charging cable to your phone or something like that. Sometimes crumbs can be a bit much and we need to calm it down a little. So we're gonna take Jody's daughter's white on white and we will do something with it. Now this won't help her cause it's too chaotic, but sometimes we just need that unifying fabric to settle everything. Okay. So then we put Whoops, someone's talking to me. Someone's asking YouTube questions. I like to answer YouTube questions as soon as I can, but I'll have to wait. Hi, Kathy. Kathy has finished pressing half square triangles, which is a job and a half, and then put together a cake mix recipe, cake mix recipe, tablet I'm not sure what that is oh <laughs> 168 three and a half inch half square triangles and six are you doing the bunny hunter quilt along thing the mystery whoosh oh are you just now you need a pattern so you're making it up yeah I like sometimes when there's like a T in there for some reason I really enjoy that so for this though I need to have a line I need something more than just what I have. So we'll put two rules, rulers together. because so we need to go from diagonal to diagonal. So we can make large half square triangles or we can make small ones. So I have my line. Oh, I'm not sure on this machine. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the sew line at a quarter of an inch too. 
because I don't know where it exactly is on this machine and maybe I want to be a little bit more precise. So I take the time. It's just one block. It's not that big of a machine, big of a deal. And I don't have the tape on this machine, so I can't do that. So then we'll put this on here. And I'm going to look at it too, and I can think, here's that strip. So maybe if I want to put it this way or this way, so I have that, and I have that. Or if I put it this way, then I'll have that, and I'll have that. I mean, we really don't have to be super particular, right? But maybe you want to be. That is a lot, isn't it? Hi, Rose. Oh, we're still here babbling away. Oh, it's almost 4 o'clock. You are very late. Go to the corner. 50 lashes with a wet noodles. What my... Oh, the cats have to climb over the iron cord. They haven't had to do that in a long time. They don't know what it is. Oh. I have some of those. I haven't tried them yet. Oh. Jackie, what are you making? Just quilt as you go blocks? It just popped into my head, Rose, so it must have been your thought process coming at me. Sometimes these things just hit me. Now, you might need to pin if you're going for precise. If, if things are necessary to be really precise, sometimes I like to make it larger. Like maybe I'll make a seven inch or seven and a quarter. Usually a half inch more for the crumb block is enough. You have a lot of seams and stuff, so maybe... Maybe, can I do this with that? Let me see, I should be able to, it's a, no, I can't. I can't, I'm not that good. So that way you can go ahead, oh, this is just gonna be what it is, it doesn't really matter. So if things shift or whatever, you still end up with the size you need. Did I even do these? Yeah. White on white, sometimes it's hard to see which side you're at. So I'm just drawing a quarter of an inch Oh, seam away from the seam allowance. I do highly recommend a new needle if you're going to be doing stuff like this. Just sewing crumbs. Like if, I don't know about you guys, when my printer's gonna run out of ink, I go ahead and print off some random patterns that I've been wanting to print, like maybe for an applique thing. So I use up the last of the ink. So maybe if your needle needs to be changed soon, you wanna just make a whole bunch of crumb blocks. Thanks, Hazel. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Oh, the cats, they sure know when I do something different. I put that iron on the floor so I had space on the desk still. Miss Mocha knew exactly where it was. this a little bit of a press I'm gonna pretend like I'm hitting the steam because oh, I was reaching for that steam button that's it the two irons the Panasonic the steam is right here and then on the Sunbeam the steam is over on the other side it's kind of weird and slightly annoying on that bit I'm always like spraying water out instead of hitting the steam button now doesn't matter if our ruler is long enough, we're going to cut down the center. And you know, once you have half square triangles, you can do so many things with it. You can make zigzags, flying geese. You can make squares and squares and all the fun things. So I'm going to press it to the white. And I want to make sure that none of the seam allowance from all these crazy colors are sticking through. Those would definitely shadow on it and show. It's a scrappy quilt, but still, if I'm using white, I want to be nice. So there is one. Do the same thing here. And there is the other. So while we're just chatting and working on this, I had a thought. I started doing it, and I've only done one thing, so let me know if I'm crazy. You guys loved, most of you love the Advent series that I did with my friend. Well, I've been purchasing a few things as they're on sale, and I think about them and see them for 2024 Advent. But anytime I pick up, let's say I buy this for my friend, right? I buy two 
because I'm creating a second advent box that I'm going to put into my Etsy shop for sale. So one of you can have the same advent items and open them with my friend and I. Does that sound crazy? Of course, I have to have a certain price for it. I will be doing certain things and buying things on sale to make sure the price is as low as possible. I'm also going to be putting some handmade items into it to make sure that's another way to keep the cost down and everything. So is that crazy or do you think I'm good? Do you think that's something I'm good at? Uh, hold on. Do you think that's a good idea or should I just stop now and not get that far into it? Hi, Michelle. Sounds like fun, Sue. So I, I, this is what I'm saying. Worst case scenario, I'll just end up with extra stuff. Now mine end up measuring six inches. I believe with this process, they're supposed to both be six and a half, but it's like whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these up to, I'm gonna trim it to five and a half inches. I know it's a totally random number, but it allows me to get rid of any wonkiness. Does that sound like fun, Giovanna? I know we're not the only people that enjoy Advents like that and have some of the fun things. And I kind of rearranged things this year. I already have plans. It's going to be, I should have done better with that cactus bit, but that's all right. I have different plans on how I'm going to wrap it and how it's going to be presented. It's still going to be the same Advent series. You know, we, it's not going to be anything different, but it's just going to be different, if that makes sense. This is our third or fourth year doing it, so I thought it'd be time to change it up just a little bit. I was feeding the dog and cat, so I missed what you said. Oh, I was talking about making an advent box up. Whatever I purchase for my friend or I create for my friend for the advent of 2024, I was going to get an extra one and put an advent box into, oh no, Jackie. Oh, I always worry about that so much. And down the middle, that doesn't even sound like you could do much to salvage it. Because sometimes like when a long one breaks off, you just have a shorter ruler. Sorry, I was thinking that to have an advent box, so someone could purchase an advent box, try to keep a really reasonable price, and the, or even just to give one away. I haven't gotten that far yet. To um, So as I'm opening my advent and my friend's opening their advent, another person can have the same exact thing or something very similar. Like maybe if there's an embroidery pattern in it, it's not the same embroidery pattern, but it's a similar one. So then it's like, kind of like a thing together, you know, a little camaraderie. So you, you're doing the Advent series with my friend and I. I don't know why I brought this over. All right, so here we go. We have the two. You can make... So this piece of cactus fabric is totally extra. And it's not even necessary, but I'm going to leave it on there for now. So you can have crumb flying geese. It's always the favorite one, right? Oh, so Sonny, you think that's a good idea too? A raffle? Oh, I don't know, Jody. Now, Florida, it's illegal to have a raffle unless you pay like $250 and register with the state and do all of that. So I don't know how I can do it in Arizona and not go to jail, but I can look into it. I know I can just do a giveaway, but I'm not sure how I can do it, you know, to buy tickets into it and stuff like that. So there's that, or maybe you want to go opposite. I got it. I'm there. I'm getting there. So maybe you want to put the flying geese together like that, or maybe you want to do... This would end up like you could have the rows of color going this way. Or I don't have enough to create a zigzag. But you know, you can do the different things like that with the chevron design and all that. I 
I can check in periodically throughout the year, Jody. I don't want to spend a lot of money purchasing things up ahead of time. And if nobody wants to, you know, donate a little bit, do a raffle, purchase it from the shop. But it has to be reasonable because, like, maybe I can do split it in half do, you know, 12 and 12, so two people can do it. You could do the 12 days of Christmas versus the whole 25 days of Advent. But I definitely want to put some handmade items in it because that's what's going to allow it to be less expensive, some Dollar Tree ones when I find fun things. But I have to at least break even, right? If I'm going to do it for a lot of people, I could do it with my friend. We swap back and forth. That's not bad. But to do it, to, I mean, sometimes, like I said, I, I don't mind giving it away. I just have to plan accordingly to make sure things are, you know, everything just works out right. But that was a thought in my head. So if a few of you think it's a good idea, I'll keep collecting things and then make a decision from there. Because, dear friend, if you're watching this video, I'm not trying to be mean, but... My friend and I can give the same thing in 2023 and give it again in 2024. Neither one of us would really remember. I know, I know it sounds mean, but it's realistic because I found something really fun for my friend and I wanted her to know right away. And I'm like, listen, do you want me to show you? It, you know, Advent's 12 months away. She's like, yeah, show it to me. She says, I won't remember three days from now anyway. And I'm like, perfect. Look at what I got. Ain't it cool? Oh, I know, Jody, but I want my channel to be reasonable. <laughs> I'd like to do something. I'd like to find something that I can order. Like, okay, this is really cool. Like, okay, this is what uh, my family laughs at me because I'm an Amazon woman. Oh, that doesn't sound right. I love shopping on Amazon. So what I did is I feel the pull for bowl, co bowl cozies this year. So I thought, you know what, let me just get the Wrap and Zap. We can do a video on Wrap and Zap, talk about it, and see how it is, and see if it's good. They had Wrap and Zap. They're like, oh, buy it from Walmart online. It's, you know, inexpensive. For a yard of it, it's $12 now. But I was on Amazon, and I found that this one company, it was sold by Amazon, shipped by Amazon, or whatever. But it was $4.97 a yard. And when I was looking at Joann's and Michael's and all the places online to find it, a lot of them by the bolt, it's 20 inches by 36 inches for a yard. When you buy the plastic package where it's all sealed up, it's 45 inches by 36 inches. And I got it for $4.97. Amazon would only let me buy four, so I grabbed them. The Buy Me a Coffee Kofi, that might work. I might, Jody. I might just, I might do similar, but not the same. So that way, as the year goes on, when I find things for my friend, maybe I find a hand lotion or um, a sample of an iron cleaner. And maybe I get something else later on that's a hand cream, but not the same. Or maybe it's a foot scrub or a face mask or something. Yeah, I like taking the different fabrics and adding them in. It really changes up the craziness oh, look you can make pinwheels the craziness of all of the scraps and if you go and you hang out with Jody and maybe your daughter will let you do all reds then it would work out some of the ones that people pay for the advent I get it it's your money if you like what you're getting you can do whatever you want I cannot always justify spending $200 and not knowing what's in it. I love those boxes that come every month with the different things in them. But if I don't know what's in it, I can't always justify it. I saw one recently that each month that I saw it, I really enjoyed it. And you would think, did I write it down? Nah, why would I do something like that? All right, let's sew a little bit more before we all run away. I'm just going to sew some of these. And I think I'm going to take these since they're all, for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't even... Okay, this one's not mine, so I think you guys sent these scraps to me, which would explain why they're all the same size, and I don't I don't recognize some of them. 
Now, even the Barbie fabric, I have this Barbie fabric, but this is not my Barbie scrap. This one is. I don't know about this, and I don't recognize this at all. So these had to have come for you guys. So thank you guys so much for um, supporting this video today. The Lego Advent. I like watching the Lego Advent. I think next year I'm going to get an Advent calendar. I can feel it. This is from my daughter's quilt. This was one of the parts that were cut off, though, because she didn't like the flowers. So, yeah, she didn't get flowers. I like flowers. You don't get flowers. Those are the rules. So there's my block. And you can also make less scrappy blocks this way. They go a little bit further. Let's say you make that six and a half inch block and you're like, that's it, Robin. You are crazy. I'm never making another. Turn it into a coaster or a hot pad. Turn it into a zipper. Oh, I'm not at the quarter inch anymore. Turn it into a hot pad or something like that. I like the beeping of a sewing machine. Sorry. Just because you start doesn't mean you have to finish and make everything. Giovanna, you can keep on going. Last call, is anyone going to the Phoenix? Oh, Jody, how many people you got going with you, huh? Cordula loves the long videos. I bought the bolt of wrap and zap from Walmart three years ago, still have most of it. I was looking, I was watching, there's new videos coming out or it came, whoa, hold on, sidetracked. I see fabric. Can't let that one, can't let that one get away, right? I saw some new videos and they were discussing, you know, this one lady was like, I was trained in England. You know, we sew differently than the U.S. Not like at a bad thing, but we look at it this way. You look at it that way. And since I'm in the U.S., I look at it this way. So I want to see what it means to look at it that way. And she was showing how to measure the bowls and how to determine where the darts are where I just see videos and they're like, hey, put a dart here. So I'm like, okay, I'll put a dart there. But I don't, I need to know why so that I can change it. I wanna know how to make bigger bowls. And I, I have a video and well, I have several videos on how to do the plates. So I wanna do the plates. So that's why I thought, you know, I'll get the wrap and zap. And this time when I put them in the shop, I've changed my mind a little bit. Has Miranda ever seen the Quilting Marine? Um, I don't think I talked to Miranda about the quilting marine and showed them. She's definitely not a quilter. She's made quilt blocks. She, that girl, the first thing she crocheted was a lace doily with the little tiny metal crochet hooks. She's tried all of my crafts and she says, you know what, mom, have fun because I'm not going to take anything away from you. Enjoy it. It's, it's not her thing. So she didn't see that, but she's just really never been a girly girl and into flowers and all of that. So I don't think, based on her life, I don't think that'll change. If she worked with fabric, like, I don't really care for browns, but I can use browns and appreciate them. But it's not, because I'm really into brights and stuff, so it'd have to be a certain shade, but I can appreciate it. If she got something really cheap, I don't know, would she have a flower couch? Probably, but she'd probably put a cover on it, so. I'm going to ease into things when I get to Arizona. I have to be careful. I can't, like, jump right in and do a lot of stuff because I will, I will end up crashed you know I, I won't be able to what am I looking for put it down oh that just want to work maybe I have to be careful that I don't overdo things like I can do one sewing expo for one day but two days might kill me well not kill me two days might put me out of commission I should say you know I don't want to be overly dramatic so I just have to be careful on what I do I want to get things I want to be an introvert and a hermit for a while I want to get my sewing space set up get my room set up set up my bathroom I want to I want to see my area and get to know it find the thrift stores figure out the best grocery stores there are so many new places being built in surprise 
which is great because a lot of the places are regular stomping grounds for me here, even though I might only go twice a year, I still like knowing they're there. Is there any new grocery stores to try out? We're gonna have to restock the entire pantry and all of that. I'm trying to eat and get the boys to eat as much as we can now, especially if it's like open things in the refrigerator. My son Justin loves condiments. He loves hot sauces and all of that. Barely two hours would do it? Oh, okay, I'm all right then. That's what I was thinking, Jody. You're big one in Seattle, okay. Because I know you've talked to me about it before. I'm like, I can't do that. That's like Disney World. I need two days, please. I don't know what this fabric was. And it's probably too crazy in a whole piece, but I kind of like it in small chunks. I want to, I want to switch up. I used up a lot of my fabrics, which is great. Oh, Pokemon, that's that turtle dude there. I want Squirtle, maybe. I, um, I want to change up my fabric again now that I, I figured out what works for me and what works for the shop, I think. So like having novelty bowl cozies, a lot of them sold, but a lot of them didn't. So I think I want to do um, tone on tones instead of having, you know, well, cactus bowls aren't too bad, but instead of having cactus bowls or having whatever, what do we have? I don't know. A whole bunch of lips or something on a bowl it'll just be a red bowl or a green bowl and I think that might do better in the shop to just have I think to have a wider audience to purchase it than to have a, a bowl cozy with clowns on it because that doesn't always go over well now I have I have one of my bowl cozies I am I am revamping my pattern, and once I get it all set and I make my test ones, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it. But here's my, oh, let me get all untangled. Don't burn myself with the iron. Here's my bowl cozy. I use it all the time. I eat rice bowls. I love rice bowls. I don't eat a lot of cold things, but occasionally I have, you know, ice cream. So, like, robots, okay? It's a novelty fabric. It's not the best choice. So, I wash it all the time. So, can you see how it's kind of... I don't, I don't really like, it's not an issue, right? But it's kind of worn and it's like you want your quilt to be, but I want my bowl cozy to be a little more substantial. And I also want to make bowl cozies in a different, a whole different thing. I've learned a few new tricks. I'll do an updated bowl cozy video and we'll talk about different things. And then I need to do a separate video so that in the shop, I learned that when you wash this afterward, you're supposed to take your bowl. Here's a, it's not a bowl, but don't let it go dry in the dryer. You put your bowl in and you take your corners and you pull them up and you let it finish drying around your bowl. And then that way it holds its shape. Cause the whole point of the bowl cozy is to fit around your bowl. So I know now how to make it to fit my bowl I know some tricks for sewing it all together, and I have some fun ideas, I hope. At least it's going to be fun. If no one likes the bowl cozies, I'll use them, because I love my bowl cozy. I keep it in here. My kids and I, I've tried to integrate with them, but we're definitely two different types of people, so we're just going to, we're going to be roommates, and I'm going to have my favorite appliances and my favorite utensils, and they're going to have theirs, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Especially with my food allergies, that way I don't have to worry about like cross contamination and stuff. Oh, you're welcome. I just happened to see that. I must, I must have said bowl cozy out loud or thought it in my head too much because YouTube started showing them to me. I mean, like crazy. All of a sudden, after Christmas, I was seeing a bunch of different bowl cozies. They were showing me something else too. I don't remember what it was, but it was crazy because. I know if you say it out loud, the things, the electronics can hear you, but I swear, I did not search for bowl cozies. I didn't think I said it out loud, but all of a sudden the video started showing up. Black and white print? Yeah. You know, maybe we need some like red ones for pasta and we need orange ones for pumpkin soups and stuff like that. It keeps the food in the bowl 
cold or hot, either way, longer. It, uh, I think that's enough for now on those. When you're sewing makes you feel grumpy, I say that's the time to stop. Like you've done enough, it's time to move on to something else. You shouldn't be grumpy when you're sewing because I firmly believe that you put your feelings into the project. So if you put a lot of grumpiness into it, like people who make prayer shawls, they put good thoughts and vibes and prayers into the shawls and then give them to like cancer patients and stuff. So you wouldn't want grumpiness in it. So when I get grumpy, I just stop and then I'll set the project aside for a while and let those grumpy vibes kind of dissip, dis, disappear into the atmosphere. Dissipate? Dissipate, that's the word. Can you make a pattern for a plate cozy for the past plates? Giovanna, I don't know what a past plate is, sorry. Pasta plates, plastic plates, paper plates? Made three for my daughter's family this year. Two were more plain, but the larger one was a novelty print. I need some new ones too. Yeah, it's like we all did the bowl cra crazy, the bowl cozy craziness, uh, what, about a year or so ago? And now we're all ready for some new ones. We're either tired of what we have or it's time to get some new ones going. And that's like it. So we all know how to make a bowl cozy. Well, most of us know how to make a bowl cozy. We've made them. We've watched the videos. Now, if we've used them, you kind of know what you like and don't like about your bowl cozy. So you can change it up a little bit. Follow the basic guidelines and then do what works for you. You can take these crumb blocks and turn them into a bowl cozy. Maybe put pasta or soup it's not a bowl but a deep plate I, I think i know what you're talking about when we do the plate video it's on my i was looking for my my youtube list is usually there when i do the plate cozy i just wanted to wait for that um wrap and zap stuff to come in and really i can't i'm not functioning very well in this area because <laughs> i have to <laughs> I had to wheel my chair over here to walk around it, and I had to wheel my chair over there to walk around it that way. And oh my goodness, I stub my toes, I knock over the studio lights all the time, like a daily basis. It's just crazy, and I don't have all my supplies. So I'm glad you guys are giving me a little bit of grace and waiting for me to finally, hopefully, let's hope it happens soon, get to Arizona, and then I can get back into the weekly things. Yeah, I, I know now that I, I, so I thought she meant pasta and not past because that just kind of confused me a little bit. Yeah, my father owned an Italian restaurant and ate, we ate pasta two or three times a week. I 100% know the plates you're talking about. I think when I show you how to do the plate cozy and I show you how to do the bowl cozy and give you the new tips that I've learned that you'll be able to mash the two together and create one customized for what you have. I don't know if the person's here or watches the replay, but I've had I've had a couple people ask about custom made bowl cozies and they need them a certain size to fit like two different bowls. Like my husband ate out of one bowl and I ate out of another bowl and we had our own forks. Like this was dad's fork, this is mom's fork. We all have our preferences, but a bowl cozy won't work for both bowls. Like, I'm using my kids' corral bowls. Corral. You know those really thin ones that that don't really break? They're supposed to be shatterproof and stuff. Trust me. Drop them on the floor. On a tile floor, they break. Giovanna, I appreciate that. Catherine, I have got something for you. Let me see. I hated sewing the top stitching part of the three casserole cozies I made but love the finished product. I hate stitching around the top of the cozies too. And I watched that video and I questioned this constantly in my head. Why can't I do this? And you know what that lady said, Robin, this video is seven years old or this video is six years old or wherever it was. Yeah, YouTube's giving me old videos. I'm loving it. They're ones I've never seen before in new channels, even though they don't make videos anymore. But she's like, Robin, I don't know who you are and I don't know your name, but I'm going to tell you, Robin, I give you permission to do this. And I'm like, yes, that is what I wanted to do. I just wanted someone to tell me it's okay. And you know what? 
I don't know why I felt like I needed permission. I'm always thinking if I put it in the shop, it has to look a certain way. People expect this, people expect that. But if you make a good product using good quality supplies, if you deviate from the plan a little bit, I don't see where it's a big deal. If someone doesn't like it, it's not like I force anyone to purchase something from my shop, right? If you don't like what I make, don't buy what I make. Or request something special if you just don't like the fabrics or something. So that's what I'm going to do. You know, we have to have these little talks with ourselves all the time. Thank you, Sunny. I appreciate you guys. I really do. So we have to tell ourselves every now and then to stop listening to the quilt police. Stop listening to the voice in our head. Unless it's, you know, sometimes we have to listen. Robin, you have to take a break. Your mouth is dry. Get a drink. I show you guys my container all the time. It never changes. It's always one of two. Shatterproof means that when it breaks, it doesn't give you sharp edges that you can get cut on. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get that. But when I dropped them, because I have that nerve issue with my hands, I drop things. I have to be very careful. When I hold stuff, I can't just hold it. I have to consciously feel it in my hands because I can't always feel things. So I have to feel it and I have to purposefully walk with it knowing it's in my hands. I'm kind of grateful my kids don't have grandkids because I've always, or at least yet, because I've always been afraid I would drop them. So I have to think because before when I would just hold it and it would end up being like, Oh, whoops, my hand would just drop it. And those bowls, they broke, and they had those little fine bits of glass you have to, or, or plate, you have to clean up with a wet paper towel and stuff. And then, I tell you, I don't care who you are, anytime you drop a plate or a glass, you are going to find shards of it underneath your refrigerator or your stove five years later. It always happens that way. I'm way past good. Thank you, Sonny. I appreciate that. But there's certain things like when people expect a certain technique. I don't want to give away all of the good stuff until we do the video. But when you see it, you'll be like, oh, Robin gave me permission. Oh, Robin, that is such a great idea. I thought about it or why hadn't I thought about it? It's some simple ideas that I never really think about. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? But. And I'm not saying anybody's copying off of me, but it's one of those things when you put it out into the universe and you say, oh, I'm thinking about buying a red car. And the next thing you know, because you've thought about a red car, now you see 25 of them out on the street. So it's not that, you know, here on YouTube, we're all copying each other or we're all jump starting off of someone else's idea. I'm not the first person to do this. I won't be the last. It's just something that Maybe you saw it, maybe you thought of it, you know, whatever. Unless you're in a cave and you never talk to anyone or see anything, there's no original ideas. Right? The Corel, yeah, those are those. They're crazy. Under your bare feet, exactly. And I don't care, I vacuum it, wet paper towel it, everything. Finish with binding? That's it, Jackie. That's it. I have to write it down. Hold on. I'm tangled up in my thing. I, that's one of those things. I never thought about putting binding on the top of a bowl cozy. No, I don't want to write it in this. I might never look there. Hey guys, look at this. My planner is right here. I did learn a lesson that if the end of your week is busy and the beginning of your week is not that busy, don't schedule everything at the end of the week on something that's already busy. So I'm going to add that to Saturday. So I'm going to look for check bowl cozies with, I almost said batting, with binding. That is a brilliant idea. That wasn't, that wasn't the idea I was thinking about. It's just a really simple twist to the technique we're already doing, but it'll be fun. Facebook is amazing. I love Facebook. I don't like Facebook, but I like Facebook groups. Oh, trays. Yeah, trays would be smart. I don't know. I That wouldn't help me, Jody, when I'm washing dishes, though. This is the first time we've had a dish. I've had a dishwasher. I lived in the house for 
21 years without a dishwasher. And I find, I don't even use the dishwasher that much, but I sure do wash a lot of dishes every day. We used it a lot when my daughter was home because then she cooked, Justin cooked and I cooked and Robbie cooked. But Justin cooks on Sunday for the entire week. And then he just does little things for breakfast or something. So like Sunday, he runs a dishwasher because there's so many dishes. But most of the time I don't run it. Hi, Tammy. Yeah, we're live right now. Yeah, the sleep thing is just weird. I took my mattress and I took it from the head of the bed here. And since it's that, that squishy stuff, I just spun it like this. And then I couldn't sleep for days. So I spun it back around and I slept great. But then I got back onto that weird schedule. I don't know what's going on. I'm used to taking a little nap at 7, 8 o'clock, waking up, doing my nighttime chores, you know, change the litter and brush my teeth and all that stuff, and then going right back to sleep, but it's been crazy lately. Usually it only happens for a couple of nights, but it's been a while. You hate binding. Don't worry, we won't put binding on it. Maybe we'll do both, one with binding and one without binding, because the binding sounds like fun. I might want to try that. I think for certain bowl cozies, that that would be a good plan. There. Right, everyone. I've had enough. I'm grumpy sewing now. I think it's because it's warm in here. It's not... You know what? Let me tell you first of all before I get into this. When I first made these, I told you guys they're great because it goes on that um, pressure point right there, the pulse point, and that if you have problems with arthritis and cold hands, if you wear just, this is just, I think there's batting in it. Yeah, there's batting and two pieces of fabric. This hand is so hot. It actually gets sweaty and stuff, and this hand still gets kind of chilly cold because I don't have anything on it. I think that Tammy might be a little bit behind if we're talking about sleep stuff because that was a little bit ago. Um, this is really warm. I'm going to take this off just to cool down a little bit. It, it really heats me up. I probably should wash it too. But uh, it gets all the wrinkles in it just from sitting on my wrist all the time and I store it like this. But that thing works really great. It really warmed up like my whole arm and everything. So that's great. Now I lost my train of thought from before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Binding bowl cozies, dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, but when you live alone, someone's got to do the dishes, right? And I create, no, I feed five cats out of five bowls in the morning and four cats at night. Because S'morezies doesn't get canned food, but I, I drain out some of the gravy for her in the morning as a little treat. So there's <clears throat> so there's all of those. Whatever I do, I kind of eat off paper plates now. I usually don't, but I got a stack of those old-fashioned white paper plates. 300 of them for a dollar. How can you go wrong there? Oh, thanks, Tammy. I'm glad you found us. Yeah, we go live right now on Fridays, the first and third Friday of the month. Everything's down below in the description box for that information. Right now, we're kind of in a weird spot, but there's a lot of fun videos before, and I have a long list of fun stuff coming up. Once we get settled, we're making... Oh. Um, nobody mentioned that you couldn't hear me. I've been wearing a microphone this whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone, if you couldn't hear me, but I never plugged my microphone in. That is hilarious. See what kind of day I'm having? So I, I guess being careful with my microphone and not breathing too hard and worrying about the sewing machine was kind of hilarious. Oh, a AC. Um, this room is hot. The AC actually just turned on, so it doesn't, my son has it set at 76. It doesn't, <laughs> thanks everyone. I know there are some people, it definitely like during the replay and stuff, they can't hear it, which is why I purchased a microphone. So that, that's okay. You know, things happen, we're all human, right? It is what it is, but I think it's kind of hilarious because I put it up on the tripod 
because I keep my phone down here, there's always someone I'm chatting with before I go live. So I can't plug it into my phone until, you know, the live stream, and then I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> so I think it's just hilarious. Anyway, yeah, so there's no windows here, and I have the ceiling fan on low, so it doesn't sound like a wind chamber in here when I'm doing videos and stuff. So it gets a little warm. But thankfully, the AC just kicked on. That just shows you that it's a little bit of a, a warm day today. Right, Catherine? Every now and then, uh, I look and I'm like, how did I fill up a sink? I have the, my kids have a little strainer. Mine was like 10 years old, so I didn't bring it with me, but I didn't know theirs was smaller. So I took one of the dish drying mats that I made in one of our videos and I put it over on the dining room table and I put like my cups and I put all the cat bowls there so that when they either air dry or if they're not dry in a couple hours, I hand dry them with a clean hand towel. Let me tell you, I can tell you all kinds of stories. When you're living with other people, you know, it's just not you, so you have to make adjustments. And this is, it's, it's not me complaining. We're just conversationing. I lived with my husband for, what, 29 years? And then I lived alone for four years. And I tell you, that's the first time I ever lived alone. And I've really gotten to enjoy living alone. Because when I put the hand towel on the, the little handle of the stove, I know that all I've done is wash my hands and dry it, and it's today's towel. But when you live with other people, you don't know if they took it and they cleaned the mop. They, my kids don't do this, but if they mopped up something off the floor or a puddle on the stove or something, you don't know. I mean, I hope this doesn't happen to you, but you don't know if they washed their feet and dried it with the kitchen hand towel. How gross would that would be? But anytime I dry dishes, I always get a fresh towel because I want to know that the towel that's touching my clean dishes is clean, right? There's no sense washing your hands in the bathroom sink and using a dirty towel to dry them. It defeats the whole purpose of it. Oh, that's so funny. I walked away talking to you and everything. All right, let me catch up on comments. I think I missed some. Oh, we're talking about snow. Okay. I'm like, I didn't know what five to eight inches was. What's five to eight inches snow heavy? Snow dia. Some people are just getting snow for the first time. It's crazy. Tammy, if you like different, then you're going to fit right in with us because we're all just a little bit crazy and a little bit different. It's so fun if we all think the same. You guys teach me and I learned so much from you just as you guys learn from me because that's what the thing is is like I'm going to show you how to do the technical part of this bowl cozy and then what you do with it you're like oh Robin check it out this is what I thought and I did this and I'll be like oh that's cool can I copy you and you're like yeah go ahead you showed us how to do it copy me no problem see as I say there's no like copying but I swear every time I say something now, I know certain channels, they've recorded their videos like three weeks ago. So if I say something today and tomorrow someone comes out with a video on bowl cozies, it's not because I mentioned it today. It's just one of those weird coincidences with the universe. It's like you talk about it and then all of a sudden you see red cars everywhere. It's just weird, random things. See, I can circle back to conversations. So it's just one of those weird things. So it's, it's nice that we can all learn off each other. And if everyone's just a little bit different and a little bit crazy, I think it helps because then we get the new um, different things. Oh, upstate New York, Susan. Hi, Susan. My husband was from upstate New York. We, uh, we were in Carthage for a couple winters outside of Fort Drum. Oh, that was a crazy time. Is Michelle leaving us or Michelle left us? Oh, no, we're all being careful from snow. I'm just playing catch up. Hand towels are only for that. Yeah, I didn't. People are like, why are we going through so many paper towels? Not me, but I'm like, you guys use paper towels for what? I didn't know people like dried their hands with paper towels and stuff. I can hear jingle bells. The cats are playing with something. That's probably s'mores. She loves the little balls with bells in it. 
Hey, any reason to stay home and not do anything but be creative, I'm all for it. <laughs> That's okay, Tammy. We talked to everything here. I carry, I've been really good. So the, it's like seven months now that I've been here and I didn't let my kids see my crazy yet. But I think my oldest, Justin, because he's he leaves at like 1130 in the morning to work because he works like 12 to 9. So he has to leave for the next town over. Oh, I hate when cords get twisted. And uh, I've been talking to, I talk to myself. I talk to my phone. I talk to the cats. I don't care. I'm tired of just hiding stuff and not being myself. And I, there's no reason for me not to be myself, right? It's a personal thing that I put upon myself. So I'm just like, hey, talking to the cat. I was singing to the bunnies outside the other day. I don't care. Rochester, Rochester. I know, I know Rochester, of course, but I don't remember. Now, my sister-in-law lives on Lake Champlain. No, yes, no, 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 no. Lake Ontario. Lake Champlain is a lake, yes, but she lives on Lake Ontario, and we were probably like an hour from her. Black River, Watertown. That's where we were. Carla and Va Vanna. Oh, you're silly. I didn't catch on to the Carla part until I saw the Vanna. I caught on there. Bye, Catherine. Thank you for hanging out with us. You know, I talk to myself. I don't care. Well, some, well I don't talk to myself, self. I kind of... Um, I yell at myself, Robin, my middle name is Suzanne. I'm like, Robin, Suzanne, you know better than that. Or Robin, Suzanne, you better make sure you remember to, I just set timers for everything. You put the clothes in the washer, you have to remember to put them in the dryer. You put them in the dryer, you have to remember to take them out. So I set timers and I talk to myself. Lake Ontario, yeah. I'm looking for some kind of conversation, Lee Helen. I'm looking for anything. See, everyone is in like these little groups. There's like a group of you guys here and a group of you guys there. There are some people in Florida and everyone's kind of scattered. Like Florida, I always say it takes like takes us like nine hours to get out of Florida. So when they do like Florida's so long, they do the like um the quilt shop hops where you go from quilt store to quilt store. Just to do Florida itself, you really need a few days, just to several weekends, just to hit them all. Because it could take you six or eight hours just to drive to one store. Where other people are like in Arizona or Washington or, you know, Utah, all those states over there. They can hit a whole bunch of states because they're all right together. Except, you know, Texas. Texas, you guys are in, in uh, rough shape too because you're huge. Uh-oh. Once we were at a restaurant and something got spilled, waitress was wiping the tables, took her dish towel, put it on the floor, stepped on it to soak up the liquid, and it continued washing tables. Now, I've put a towel down and stepped on it to soak up the, dish, the water, the liquid, or whatever, but ew, ew. Okay, that's gross. I'll go for that. I'm like, what did Rose do? That's gross. Yuck. We used to go to, in the area, what is it, Oneonta and Oneida in New York where like the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame is and stuff. We used to have a little uh, farm. My grandparents owned acreage. They had uh, fields and a little, my grandfather built a little, he built a pole barn and a little four room like cabin area. And we used to go there every summer all the time. I'm in Cape Coral, just outside of Fort Myers, south of Tampa, Jean. It takes us like three hours to get to Tampa. We're north, we're between, I always say like we're between uh, Tampa and Naples. A lot of people know Fort Myers now, but I don't know. Thank you, Michelle. I'm glad because the microphone was never even plugged in. Look, I thought I was doing really good. I had it all set up. I got it all uncurled and I had it in good shot so I wouldn't cut the cables or anything. I was doing great. I was just so proud of myself for getting things set up ahead of time. I've got both studio lights, even though I turned one off because I was baking. 
I had a different sewing machine set up. I'm like, look at me, different iron, everything's great. I didn't even bother plugging a darn thing in. Thanks, Michelle. You guys are all amazing. I just wanted, I wanted a community to where I said, when we're all sitting around this table, like there's Michelle, there's well, Giovanna. She's pretty far away, so she's at that corner of the table. Jody has to have that end of the table because I feel like Jody can't sit still. So we're going to put her at the end of the table so she doesn't bump into anybody. And then, you know, we're just all hanging out here chit-chatting. No rules, no you have tos, just kind of do what works for you. Oh, I'm glad. If it's like this, I might not turn on that other one again because it's hot. I had the two of them going in my last room, but I was able to arrange things. I told my daughter, if I'd have known she if we'd have known she was gonna be traveling so she offered her bedroom to me. Her hey. Do you guys want to see my daughter's bedroom? I'll do a video. I won't take you there now. She's got a huge bedroom. She said I could have her bedroom, but I thought that's not fair. It's her bedroom. Her bedroom is like three times the size of this room. Plus her cats are used to it. I said, it's only going to be for a few months. It'll be fine. Cause we were supposed to move in October and it's January. So, you know, so I'm like, whatever, it's fine. But I, I'm thinking I really should have taken her up on the offer cause she's never home now. Her big bedroom is empty. Should we go now? Do you guys want to go now? I'll wait and let me see. If you guys say now, I'll take you over there now. But then afterwards, I'll have to say goodbye because I don't want to put it back in the tripod. I'm going to do a video of this house except for the boys' bedrooms and before we even get packed up and everything. And then, okay, let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get seasick, so just be careful. Um, I'm going to do a video of all the rooms and everything. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So this is what I mean. I have to have this up for the cats to easily get onto my bed because I used to have a hope chest in my other house that they could jump up to get on my bed. So there's not a lot of room to move around. So I'm always tripping over everything. So, you know, that's how it is. Let me move the tripod. So here's, <laughs> here's this side of the room. So I got the tripod, and there's the iron that the cats were smelling. So everything, can we get, nope, that's as far out as we can get. So there's, like, stuff everywhere, right? So I can never, and I can never move around without tripping over stuff. So let's just see. Bear with me, bear with me. You know, Robbie's in his room. He's the only one home, but I feel like I gotta go, shh, don't tell anyone. Okay. Oh, I can't get past the table. See? Knocked it over because that's the space to get through the table. All right. Here is, here's the dining room. So there's my boxes. And we had to start packing stuff because the cats chew on, not my cats, my daughter's cats chew on electrical cords and stuff. So there's my other fabric. So don't look at the dirty dishes. This house, I don't understand. Again, like I'll do a big video later, but like this area right here makes no sense. It's totally empty. I have my recliner there and I have my refrigerator and I brought my pantry. Yeah, I'm living in a cell. So they have the nice living room and everything. So it's great, right? But I don't understand. I don't understand this space. <laughs> I don't get it. Shh, nobody's looking. My kids are still young. They're still in their early 30s. So they have what I call the dropsies. So if there's an empty space, they go, oh, there's s'moresies. They're, they just drop things on it because they're not organized yet. So my daughter has a, a full-size bed. She's got a chair, her computer stuff, right? And she's cleared out most of her room because I made her come home and pack it. So she's got the bedside table, bookcase. That's where s'mores sleeps all the time. She's got a dresser. My daughter loves books. That goes to the bathroom. I don't know, maybe, right? It's like, is it just a weird living room? Because you're supposed to put the couch where my refrigerator is and where my chair was. You're supposed to put the TV. So then what's the other area? A living room and a family room? And then check out, this is the master bedroom, so it's huge. I'll show you from the closet, right? So here's... They don't give you much of a closet, right? I have to, I have to, my shoulders don't fit in the closet. 
that's one of her cats, and that's S'mores. So this room is huge. A room this size, I can put my, I could put my little twin bed, and I could have all this space. But I didn't want to take it away from her. It's her room. When she comes home from traveling, she needs to have her space, right? But the dining room's next to the kitchen. And then there's the washer and dryer. Now, okay, just to warn you, don't look if you don't like it, because there's a litter box in here. I'll try to angle it so it's not. So this is the master bathroom. Okay, and it's, this is not like a dig on anything, but this is, they made hundreds of these houses, right? So I've learned I do not like these sinks because when you put the water on, it splashes out. Okay, don't look, litter box, litter box. Okay, and here, remember, master bathroom. Here's the shower. That's the size of it. So when you get in it, is it <laughs> don't look at toilet so that's it you know there's my foot it's how can that be how can that be considered a master bathroom right i don't know i don't understand this house but that's my daughter's bedroom but i couldn't you know i couldn't take that from her it's it's a great bedroom it's huge and the boys bedrooms they're probably three quarters well, i'll show you this let me show you the size of the boys bedrooms without showing you the boys bedrooms for those of you, well, I would have, but I wasn't thinking straight, and we didn't know she was going to travel full time until she was traveling full time, and it was already like October, and at that point, my cats were already stressed out. This is the outside wall, so this is the boy's bedroom, so that's Justin's bedroom. His is uh, probably two feet longer this way and then right here that's where the cord goes for the tv so you can hang your tv on the wall and it goes all the way down to electrical outlet this is my room see it has these weird angles and then so that's robbie's room so i guess no his is about the same size as justin's i think robbie had this as a gaming room because his room was a slightly smaller than justin's but he has his gaming desk inside his room now and everything, and it's fine. So I don't know. I had to pick up my lamp. Good thing the light didn't break, right? Oh. Don't look at my bed. It's made, but it's not pretty. I can't wait to put a quilt on my bed when I don't have to have, you know, the cats, the cats respect my space, you know. But so here we go. We're back into my messy sewing area. So I have... I have to put, that's all like some Etsy stuff and some fabric and everything. So I've done, I think I've done a really good job with the room. You do the best you can, right? You do the best you can with the tools you have on hand. I'm just looking forward to the next space when I can spread out a little. But if I'd have known what was going on, I would have 100% taken my daughter's room. Because we could have spread out in there. The cats, I have three cats in here, so one of them lays underneath there one of them one of them lays right there those are my scrap fabrics by color in ziploc baggies with a towel over it so they lay there i do and then there's miss whiskers she doesn't come out to play very much so i have a bunch of beds underneath there and a place for them to hide sorry so yeah so that's it it's very cozy. I sit here and Justin works in the kitchen or he sits at the dining room table when he's doing stuff and we just talk back and forth. And that's why I don't get a lot of things done because I'm willing to stop and talk to my son. Of course I am. Why wouldn't I sit there and chat with my child, right? I mean, he, he may be 35, but I haven't really talked to my kids in depth on a daily basis in a long time. So of course I'm going to take advantage of it. But that's all I have for you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and for going on a wild tour. I do have a video of the outside of the house that I just never edited to show you guys and talk about what a Florida room is and what our porch looks like and stuff like that and the size of the yards. And I'll do an official tour of the house when I have like the curtains open and the lights on when most things are packed just to get a difference because I don't know 
if you guys have to be, some of them have to be like me, where you want to see what other houses look like. Because the houses in Arizona, while similar, are way different. They're huge compared to this house. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for hanging on. Yep, so everyone, go do your thing. It's almost 5 o'clock. We've been here for a long time. Oh, thank you, Susan. We, we do the best. I mean, no one's going to get along completely. You know, sometimes we don't talk because we're mad at each other, but it doesn't last long because my kids like to talk as much as I do. So that kind of tells you what's going on. All right, I have to feed the cats because... You guys want to see another one? There's Miss Mocha. She sneaks into the video. Oh, you're going to see the trash can. She has a little heart. You can see it now. She has the heart on her chest. She's looking at another cat because my daughter's cats gang up on my cat. So we need to have a bigger space. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will see you next. I'll see you on Wednesday for Whip It Wednesday. And I'll see you next Friday, whether it's a tutorial or if it's just hanging out and sewing. Guys, enjoy your weekend. I hope you get something creative done. I have some items that need to go into the Etsy shop. And as soon as they get in there, I will post on the community tab. Bye, guys.